welcome back to the session of uh, VLSA lab. Uh, in the previous sessions, we have seen about the flip flops. Uh, basically, it is an SRJ, K, and uh, uh, the D flip flops, where uh, the flip flops program were written in terms of uh, the behavioral description style. And also, we have seen about the adder, and uh, we have told the comparison between the adders, uh, which is in terms of the serial adder and the parallel adder. A serial ladder is nothing but a sequential circuit where uh, we do define a clock and uh, in the parallel ladder uh, we don't have a clock uh, that would mean that it is a combinational circuit where the output uh, depends upon the present input. So we will just move to the next set of programs uh, which is in terms of the counter. So basically the word counter is used to count the data uh, from uh, 1 to 15, uh, 1 to 16. And when we just see the comparison with respect to the counters, how the program is written. So basically we do have a classification in terms of an asynchronous counter and asynchronous counter. So in the asynchronous counter, the clock uh, is given to the first block and the output of the first block, uh, it is triggering the input of the second block as a clock. So, where in asynchronous, the clock is given only to the first clock, uh, which is an asynchronous. And in terms of the synchronous, where the clock is given to all the blocks, so basically what we do call it as, we do define in terms of the common clock. So, today in this class, uh, we will see about uh, the program uh, in terms of an asynchronous up counter, where uh, the counting mechanism is between 0 to 15 and uh, asynchronous down counter which is the counting mechanism is between uh, 15 to 0 and uh, we have told that uh, we are writing the program in different description styles uh, one is in terms of the data flow description style uh, in the data flow description style we have told that uh, we will be using a predefined word which is called as an assignment statement or it is in terms of the continuous assignment statement and next we have told that in another description style which is in terms of always at always at defines the behavioral description style and again another description style we have defined which is in terms of uh, the gate level description style and gate level description style it is also called as uh, the structural description style where we are defining the primitive gates so we will write an asynchronous up counter it is an asynchronous up counter uh, in uh, the behavioral description style as we know that uh, to start the program we are just writing the program in very long so we are invoking a predefined word which is called as module after that uh, we do have the module name uh, which is given as an async and again we are just giving a set of inputs and a set of outputs so basically we are providing uh, with respect to the clock uh, when we just define a clock uh, it becomes a sequential circuit and again we do have an another variable of an input uh, which is called as a reset that would mean that you are resetting the whole system of the blocks or the four blocks and again we have a variable of z uh, which is defined as an output so the uh, terminal list uh, which are provided uh, which is nothing but the input uh, inputs are clock and uh, reset the output uh, is a variable of z so we are counting from 0 four zeros to four one ones so that would mean that you do have a four blocks uh, which are represented by a four bit vector which is defined from zero to three so it is zero one two and three and we have a variable which is defined as z so in behavioral description style uh, we know that outputs are defined with uh, the next instruction as reg or it is register so why do we use this because the data it is moving to a variable and it is stored in the particular variable uh, which is in terms of 3 is to 0 and we do have z 
So after that, uh, we have predefined word which is called as always at and uh, with uh, respect to always at. So first uh, we are saying at the pause edge of clock or pause edge of reset. Pause edge of clock or pause edge of reset. So begin. Uh, if reset, so uh, it is an if else statement. So if uh, reset, then the first output which is defined by z0 uh, is equal to 0. Okay? So this particular representation is one bit of a representation and the assigned value for one bit of a representation is 0. Else uh, z0 is equal to complement of z0. So it can be 0 or it can be end. So you are starting with begin and you do have multiple statements and you need to end with a predefined word which is called as end. So this is for the first output. Next, uh, this first output it triggers the next input of the block. So it is always at you will be seeing in terms of neck edge of clock, neck edge of z0. So it is neck edge of z0 or what we are calling it as the pause edge of reset or pause edge of reset. Begin uh, if z1 is equal to one bit of representation which is 0. Else it is z1 is equal to complement of z1. z1 equals complement of z1 and end. So this is the output of z1 which can be in terms of 0 or 1. The output of z1 is triggering to the next block of z2 which acts as an input. So it is always at behavioral description style. It is always at net edge of z1 or pause edge of z1 begin uh, if reset. Z2 is equal to 1 bit of representation and the assigned value for 1 bit of representation is 0 else Z2 is equal to complement of Z2 and it is the end. So the Z2 is triggering the next block which is in terms of Z3 which is in terms of always at the uh, edge of Z2 or pause edge, it is the pause edge of uh, Z2. So begin, we have if reset Z3 is equal to one bit of a representation which is 0, else Z3 is equal to complement of Z3 and we are closing with respect to the end because we do have multiple statements and at the last uh, what we have is the output and we need to concatenate the outputs with respect to Z3, Z2, Z1 and Z0 so we have a concatenation operation where the values are continuously changing uh, of the output variables of Z so we would be using an assign statement uh, which is in terms of assign so it is z so followed by the different variables of the output which is triggering the uh, next input of the block uh, which is in terms of z3, z2, z1 and z1 so this particular flower packet defines a concatenation where the values that are assigned in the variables are joined. So uh, we have started with the module and uh, we need to terminate the module and the predefined word uh, with respect to the termination of this particular program or the closure of the particular program is 
with the word uh, which is called the endnote. So this is a program for an up counter where uh, we are counting the values from four zeros to four ones, which is in terms of a four bit up counter and the program which is written in terms of the behavioral description style where we are using a predefined words of uh, reg which is a register and we do have always at followed by the uh, sensitivity list sensitivity list is nothing but a set of inputs set of inputs is the clock and the reset thank you we have seen about uh, the up counter so in this particular program we will just modify with uh, respect to the down counter where uh, you are initializing from the start of uh, 4 bits of 111 and it counts to 000, zero, zero. Uh, and the modification uh, is with uh, respect to the down counter where it reads first 4 inputs of 111 so which is 15 to 0 which is in terms of 000, zero, zero. So again we are uh, writing in terms of the behavioral description style where uh, we have told that we will be using the predefined word which is in terms of uh, the uh, register and which is in terms of the always at. So what we need to do here is that we need to define the output of Z0, Z1, Z2 and Z3 as one. So in the up counter we have initialized to zero and we have taken the complement of 0 which is equal to 1. So in the down counter uh, we would be modifying uh, the bit of Z0 and Z1, Z2 and Z3 and uh, we would be seeing uh, the uh, triggering of uh, the output of the block with respect to the next input of the block with the pause edge of the clock. So again you can just see, so it is the Z0 uh, where let us say this is Z0, uh, you are using the clock and again you are getting the output. So the output of the Z0, uh, it is given to the input of the clock which is in terms of Z0. Now it becomes the clock and we are defining this clock of the down counter uh, with the pause edge of Z0 or uh, the pause edge of reset. Again the same operation after Z1, so output of Z1 is again given to the input of Z2 and we are defining the clock with clock with the pause edge of Z1 and at the last what we do have is out Z2 output is triggering the input of Z3 with the pause edge or the positive edge of Z2 okay. so this is the pause edge of Z2 so initially the uh, particular values would be 1 in terms of output of Z0, uh, Z1, uh, Z2 and Z3 and uh, depending upon the, the pause edge of the output which is triggering the uh, next input of the block the values changes from uh, 4 1s to 4 0 so uh, this is with respect to the asynchronous down counter so we have seen up counter and down counter so the basic mechanism is the clock is given to the first block and the output of the block which is available is triggering the next input which acts as a clock thank you